All right, let's do this one last time for New Vegas. I know I said the next chase video would be Skyrim with the Courier, but this is a very special circumstance for two reasons. Firstly, this was a mod created by the Journal 4, who was very much a fan of the Nuka Cola Super Fan video, and decided to make my character from that run into a chaser known as the Nuka Freak. Seeing how they went out of their way to make a mod based around my antics, I thought it was only right to do a video on it as soon as I learned about it. As for the second reason, this is not like one of the normal chase videos. With the other runs, it's all about fulfilling some sort of prerequisite that then causes one of the game's NPCs to start running after me, hell-bent on engaging in dialogue. The Nuka Freak is a man of very few words. He does not wish to talk to me, he only wishes to kill. That means the rules will be slightly altered this time, fast travelling is still not a thing so don't worry, but seeing how he isn't trying to talk to me, the challenge obviously cannot feel the usual way if he catches up to me. So rather, this time the challenge will be void if he manages to kill me. To make this a little bit more interesting, I got the assistance of the mod author to get the form ID for the Nuka Freak so that I could make him essential. Meaning, while I can down him, he will never die, and after a very short amount of time, he will jump right back up and continue his pursuit. For all of you who have ever left a comment on one of the other Chase videos saying, it's like running away from Mr. X in Resident Evil. Well, that just got a little bit more accurate. Now, with all that out of the way, let's begin. I start by screaming at Doc Mitchell, which is a reasonable first response after being shot in the head if you ask me. Then for specials, you should know how this is going to go by now, given that I am not restricted to any one weapon, I am of course going to go for my favourite playstyle of using a very big melee weapon that just hits things really freaking hard. This goes for my tag skills as well, where I go with melee weapons and then unarmed and survival for perks like Piercing Strike, Travel Light and Rad Child. Finally for traits, it's heavy handed and skilled. Barely put any points into luck this time around, meaning less crits, so I'd rather take the flat damage increase over relying on criticals for maximum damage. The instant I leave Doc Mitchell's house, the Nuka Freak is already waiting to end my existence. I quickly hop the fence and once I have a little distance on him, I open up the console and input the console command to make him immortal. For those of you curious, that is set essential followed by the plugin ID, which in my case was 0C, and then the Nuka Freak's form ID of 0013F1, then finally leave a space and press 1 again, and then hit enter. If you wish to make him immortal again, just re-enter the same command, except replace the final one with a 0. Now with the unkillable snail hot on my tail, it was time to plan my route. As I have done this no less than 5 times before in New Vegas alone, it should come as no surprise that I have a very good idea of how to win the run and optimise my route. To make things a bit more interesting this time, I will be siding with the Legion. Simply put, I have never sided with them before in a chase video and I am very curious how that will affect the run. I'm going to start by heading east of Good Springs, down to Sloan and then up through Hidden Valley to the crater of Black Mountain so I can get one of the Brotherhood's holotapes. This will then allow me quick access to the Brotherhood bunker so I can wipe them out immediately, saving on time but not having to backtrack to this part of the map later. From there it's a straight shot to Vegas via the monorail at Camp McCarran. I will then deal with all of my business on the strip before leaving via Freeside towards Nellis where I will then figure out what to do with the boomers. Next I will start heading south for about 20 minutes until I arrive at Cottonwood Cove and from there the fort. Seeing how I will have already completed most of Caesar's tasks I will be standing around the fort for quite a few in-game days. Eventually I will be sent to get the materials to fix Caesar and then I will have to do the Arizona Killer Quest. This will result in a lot of back and forth to Cottonwood Cove before finally being transported to Hoover Dam. Back to the here and now, I grab the golf club in the abandoned shack near Good Springs and make the wonderful discovery that no matter how far away I might get from the freak, he will immediately teleport right next to me every time I go through a loading zone. That is terrifying. I manage to just about evade him and then run down past the memorial towards Sloan. Pathing, like always, is not the AI's strong suit, so I can breathe a short sigh of relief while he has to find a less convenient way down. I should note that while he is constantly chasing me, he is in fact hostile to everybody else. This means that evading smaller groups of enemies could be worthwhile in the open world if it means that they can slow him down even momentarily. It does make me wonder if the Legion questline will even be possible. Like, is he just going to teleport into Caesar's tent and speed along the tumour? We can cross that bridge when we come to it, as for now I take out some bark scorpions in the valley, followed by a small handful of centaurs before grabbing the first tape. 
I probably shouldn't be wasting time fighting like this so early on, but I wanted just a little bit of XP. Despite my low luck, it continues to shine through in the ways that actually matter, as I find a nearby dead prospector wearing a set of reinforced leather armour. This is of course much better than anything I have at the moment, so I immediately make a costume change. I'm not too thrilled at the enclosed space of the bunker, especially while I'm talking on the intercom and waiting for the Brotherhood to open the door. Fortunately, they all gang up and temporarily knock out the aggressive advertiser, allowing me to get strip searched and agree to getting rid of Dobson. He was nowhere to be seen as I took back my equipment, but sure enough, as soon as I step foot outside, he is back with a vengeance. I can tell from the marker on the compass that Dobson is currently not in the bunker, so I make the most of this opportunity to go in and put the old Fawn's magic touch on the radio. The Brotherhood are pleased with my efforts, and while they keep the freak at bay, or honestly better yet, he thins out the ranks upstairs, I make my way to the bottom floor to steal Hardened Super Sledge. This will carry me through the rest of the playthrough, as it's what I tend to use on most of my casual runs. While I was able to steal McNamara's card while he was distracted, I don't have the same luck with Harden. So I have to use other means to obtain it. It works so well, in fact, I do the same to head Scribe Taggart. While this is going on, the Nuka Freak is beating up the rest of the Scribes, and possibly McNamara and his guards. While I couldn't see him, I could hear the sound of a neon sign being lodged into somebody's forehead. On the way out, as the base was going to blow, I did my organs a favour and grabbed a set of recon armour from one of the nearby permanently sleeping knights. It offers more protection than the reinforced leather armour, which is good, as I need something to help me survive long enough to jog past the world's two most aggressive turrets. Other than those turrets, no one else really tries to stop me. Figured they're more focused on the other maniac running around with a two-handed weapon. Well, I say that, but I notice on my way out that he must have looted one of the knights, as he is now trying to blow me apart with a Gauss rifle. Having a ranged weapon makes him slightly more annoying to evade for the time, but on the flip side, it also means he won't be getting as close to me, so I don't need to be as nervous. For no real reason other than experience, I head back up to Black Mountain, this time intent on dealing with Tabitha. As expected, the freak reappears, and as such, we have ourselves a triple threat, albeit a rather brief one. Don't misunderstand that as me saying this was easy. On the contrary, the run was one shot away from ending here. While I may have been able to knock out the Freak once I entered Tabitha's office rather quickly, Tabitha herself brought me to a sliver of health before I could even put her down. I was just lucky that I dealt with her fast enough that I could get back over to the Freak and knock him down again before he had a chance to line up a shot on me. It was all worth it though as I've now reached level 4 and while this would usually be the point where I take the travel light perk in a normal chase run, this is of course not a normal chase run. So instead I opt for Radchild as the more healing I have the better. I leave the compound by jumping over the gate and head back down to soak up all of the delicious rads inside the crater. Since the gate at the compound is still locked, this means I have all the time in the world to wait around and get irradiated, as the freak will not only have to make his way back down the mountain the normal way by following the path, but he will also have to contend with all of the super mutants and nightkin on the way. Once I am on the fence somewhere between glowing and cancer, I carve a path through the mutants to the shortcut, the whole time in awe at just how incredible this perk really is. No matter how many times I see it, I am always blown away by just how absurd the healing is. Anyway, I start running for Camp McCarran. It's also around here that I am convinced the freak moves a lot faster whenever I'm not looking at him, as despite having a rather big head start, I can already see him approaching from a distance. I leave the nearby NCR and fiends at his mercy before making my way inside the base. He of course follows me in, but I'm not at all worried about that, as the sheer number of NCR troops in the area will no doubt halt his progress. I then hop on the monorail, and before you know it, I'm inside the tops. The Freak truly is my greatest enemy, and ally. He helps to take the heat off, and just like me, he too gets distracted and starts slaughtering his way through the tops. I get the only kill that matters, mind you, along with, of course, the Platinum Chip. Now, while I may be siding with Caesar, sitting around to indulge the cannibals at the Ultralux just didn't seem like a wise investment of my time. Plus, that quest is known to be buggy at the best of times, never mind when there's a madman stealing their fashion on the loose. Once I am done with Mortimer, the only thing he'll be tasting is defeat, meaning all that's left is Mr. House. Just like your companions, the Nuka Freak seemingly won't enter the Lucky 38, so I am momentarily safe. Well, as safe as one can be while being shot at by weaponized TVs. 
Once house is interrupted and splattered, I reach level 8 and take the super slam perk, because I am nothing if not predictable in a run like this, and then begin making my way for Nellis. Streaking my way there allows me to hold the speed advantage, which certainly helps. I do slip on a little armour though while running through the airstrikes. I want to make sure I have my legs by the end, obviously. He was clearly right behind me still, as the boomers continued to bombard the area, until I can only assume they too saw the notification, letting them know they had hit their target. When I am teleported to Pearl, so too is our friend, and we both make very short work of them. It all happens so fast, in fact, that Pearl didn't even get to say her opening dialogue, which was kind of interesting. It probably shouldn't come as a shock, but I am just killing the boomers' leaders. If I didn't, the freak probably would have anyway. At the very least this way, I can secure a few extra crumbs of experience. The most important thing of note in my stay in Nellis was that I made sure to grab some combat armour from Pearl's house. Sure, I won't be able to benefit from the travel light perk, but by this stage I wasn't all too bothered by it, I can just do the old naked manoeuvre to run faster if I want. Like I said earlier, once my business in Nellis is concluded, it's just a straight shot south to Cottonwood Cove. The boomers didn't attack me once I left, but once I was gone I could still hear the explosions in the distance, so I guess they were saving them for the Nuka Man. So this is where the run becomes primarily a lot of walking back and forth. Like, a lot, a lot. Still had some interesting encounters though. I was able to lose the freak for a while when I ran through a swarm of Cazadors, which normally wouldn't be a good idea for my overall health, but again, Radchild proves why it is broken, and why I tend not to take it in most of my runs, as it can break a lot of the fun of the challenge. After the Cazadors were dealt with, I continued south, and accidentally ran into one of the Legion patrols near Nelson. Thankfully I have the mark, so they were nice to me, and even took me straight to their base. I let their body slow the Nuka Freak's pursuit just long enough that I'm able to make it to Cottonwood Cove without him causing a ruckus. Interestingly, he does not appear right away at the fort. He only shows up when I enter the area just outside Caesar's tent and inside the tent itself. This, of course, can present some problems seeing how they took my weapons at the gate. Thankfully for now, whenever I enter the tent, Caesar and his Praetorians are more than a match for him, knocking him out just long enough for me to get my assignment to blow up the bunker under the fort. When I got underneath the fort, I began slaughtering the robots straight away, and all the while I was wondering where the Nuka Freak was. I saw him as we entered, but then he seemingly stopped chasing me. I tried to destroy the generators with the Super Sledge, but I quickly realised that that just wouldn't work, so I simply just installed the upgrades. Either way, Caesar believes you did as he asked. On the way out, I found our dear old friend, happily whacking away at the even more lifeless computer monitor that was once Mr. House. He seemed to be enjoying himself, so I just left him to his devices. Returning to Caesar, I get congratulated on destroying the bunker, killing House, and dealing with the boomers. That is all before Caesar has one of his funky brainwaves and tells me to come back tomorrow. Leaving the tent, and of course, the freak is back and killing the legionaries. He kills the one by the tentrance, which is convenient as it allows me to take his ballistic fist and put the freak to sleep for a few seconds. I say a second, but really it's a full day as I use this time to wait around for 24 hours so that I can return to Caesar and report how badly I intentionally messed up the white gloves. This whole process then repeats as he sends me to deal with the Brotherhood, has another brain tickle, and I go back outside to put the freak to sleep again, wait, and then report a job well done. Now the time has come to be Caesar's personal physician. Only problem is, I never increased my luck or medicine skills. This means I cannot just run to the New Vegas clinic and heal him with supplies, but rather I need to head to Vault 34 and find the tools to repair his auto dock. Whenever I take the raft back, the freak is nowhere to be seen. Goodness knows where he has been spat out, but there's no time to think about that, we have to find that auto dock. Vault 34, for me, is normally an absolute pain to navigate. The ghouls don't pose much of a threat, and if I'm going to be honest, I can knock out the freak pretty quickly now with my super sledge, seeing how I've put most of my points into melee weapons by now. The issue is I just find the vault itself hard to memorise. Luckily, finding the auto dock is pretty straightforward, as it doesn't require you to travel very far into the vault at all. In fact, I can skip most of the walking by just jumping down a hole in the floor, from there I bash in the skulls of a few ghouls who probably welcome the sweet release, and before you know it, I have made it to the old doctor's office and can swipe the innards of the auto dock. Thankfully, I didn't have to pass any skill checks, because that would have certainly ground this run to a stop. Once the diagnostic scanning unit is mine, I take the more conventional way out of the vault, by which I mean the stairs, before once more hauling myself back to Cottonwood Cove. For a change of scenery, I decide to swim back. Essentially, I just swam the way that I'll be going right back whenever I get on the boat. Upon return, I let the robot do its work, 
and then I am rewarded for my efforts with the most dangerous assignment that Caesar could think of. Thanks? Right, so long story short, I could not kill Kimball. You probably already guessed it, but the Nuka Freak being there and being hostile causes the NCR to immediately go on high alert, so at the instant Kimball's vertebrate lands, it just takes back off right away. I tried killing one of the snipers and then using his trail carbine to shoot down the vertebrate, but it just wasn't doing anywhere near enough damage, sadly. It's a bit of a bummer, but not a huge loss, as Caesar may be mad, but he still lets me take part in the final assault. Best part about this whole thing, the freak spawns into Lanius' tent, and the legate just shuts him down immediately. He was present during the final charge, but more often than not my legion buddies would just knock him out before he could do much. So not to undersell the significance of the final assault, but much like the rest of the chase videos in New Vegas, it's basically just a normal run from this point. Before you know it, Oliver and his brotherhood wannabes are painting the town red, and the Nuka Freak is being put down for his final rest. Once again, not by me, but by the Legate. The rest of the Legion seemingly wanted nothing to do with it, as they all just dipped the moment he showed up. Curious what would have happened if he actually managed to somehow take out Lanius here. Who am I kidding, it's New Vegas, the game probably would have just crashed. Anyway, with that I have doomed the Mojave, finishing the game, and proving yes, you can indeed beat Fallout New Vegas while being chased by the Nuka Freak. I always enjoy these types of runs, it's really fun to see how fast I can beat the game while trying to avoid certain death. I will say though that siding with Caesar wasn't as fun as the other paths, mainly because of the whole back and forth once you reach Cottonwood Cove. The others had a better flow to them in my opinion. Next Friday is of course Starfield's early access release, and I would like to reiterate, like I have many times before and in that update video, Starfield content will be coming, but at a later date. Probably not until sometime in October, outside of maybe a review, simply because I want to play the game for myself, and I really don't care about trying to jump on the game and immediately cover it just so I can get, what, more exposure and subscribers? I really don't care. I would rather just enjoy the game for what it is. In fact, I even have the rest of my runs for September mostly planned out and recorded in advance for this very reason. Case in point, next week's video was filmed back in March. Regardless, that's going to be in this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving the video a like and you're interested in more challenges in the future. Feel free to subscribe to one of these videos every week. My name is Nervous. I see everyone. I'll see you all in the next video.